Hello National University Academy students, this is Mr. Goyette um, bringing you some information for your Unit 2 quiz for Economics. Um, we're covering chapters 3 and 4 and I uh, wanted to go over with you what you'll find on the quiz. Um, I think in our chats and in our conversations in class I got the idea that a lot of this was coming, was making sense to you, that it wasn't too difficult to grasp. Um, it's really I could see that in the in in your performance in unit one. So since we're going over supply and demand uh, for both of these chapters, so far I'm confident you will do well. It looks like you're really um, understanding this and are not having a problem with the concept. So I'm going to go through this uh, briefly. Um, in economics, the amount of a product the consumer is willing or able to buy at various uh, possible price during a given time is called demand. Um, the tendency of consumers to replace a relatively more inex inexp or expensive product with similar low price product is called substitution effect. Um, and you could imagine this where there's like a, a certain name brand um, and uh, people generally buy it because it's popular but when they're when their uh, pocketbook's a little bit less uh, robust, they'll, they'll grab the um, generic brand or the secondary brand off, off the shelf. Um, if over a period of time factors other than price cause an increase in the demand of the product, the demand curve will shift to the right. Now remember, there's a ri rise in productivity and more demand, and um, the uh, demand of the product is picking up. You're get that, that curve is going to go to the right. Non-price determinants of demand include consumer tastes and preferences, consumer expectations, prices of related goods. All national um, a national advertising campaign by a bicycle company generates interest in the sport of mountain biking. What will happen to the demand curve for mountain bikes? Again, a lot of these just seem kind of obvious will move to the right because there will be an increase. Uh, if you want to look at the demand curve um, uh, get an idea of what this looks like visually because I didn't draw it on the board for you behind me here. Um, it's on page 55 and um, on, in that, dem in that uh, example they show the demand for car stereos and they show that with the lowering of the, the price of the individual item there's generally an increase in the number of items sold so I think they start off with the car stereo at $500 and there are 500 units sold when they drop the price to 300 they get uh, they sell 1500 uh, when they drop the price to $100 they sell 5000 so uh, there's this correlation to lower the price sell more units Okay, construction of new houses increases. What will happen to demand for such complementary goods as timber, paint, and paint brushes? Uh, interesting question given our current economy. Um, my wife and I are uh, looking, looking to do some things around the house, and we've been talking to our friends who are in construction business, and many of them are having to lay off their staff or have to, you know, really cut back on uh, their overhead to try to control costs and stay in business because right now the housing market is is not what it was two three years ago uh, and because of our the housing market having taken such a big hit recently um, the selling of all these ancillary items secondary items uh, isn't as um, uh, significant as it usually is isn't robust that isn't a robust peak so there's since that such a huge fall um, it's uh, there's obviously a decrease now in this example they say uh, there is a housing increase so there will be a rise in the number of goods sold among timber paint and paintbrushes in that category let's keep going here a product such as pizza has elastic demand how will a product increase in price affect demand for pizza demand will rise markedly so demand will rise when a small increase in price um, in, excuse me. How will small a small increase in price affect demand for pizza? 
demand will rise markedly. Um, it will cause the demand to fluctuate. It will have little effect. Um, I'm going to check that one. That should actually be, I think your test is actually wrong. Let's go check that one. I'm going to come back to that one in the next segment because I think I, I saw some problems with the test last time and I had to correct them. This time I just jumped right in without making the corrections. If a product is, is a necessity, it will tend to have inelastic demand. In other words, it, the demand will tend not to fluctuate because people need to buy it every time. Think of staple items in your household, uh, you know, milk, cereal, you know, uh, basic food items or toilet paper, things that you're going to use no matter um, what week it is, what time of year it is. Um, a simple way to measure demand elastically is through total revenue test. The total revenue test. A price increase causes a rise in the company's total revenue. This indicates that demand for the company's product is inelastic. <coughs> So the price increase causes a rise in the company's total revenue. Okay, so they raise the price. So let's say they raise the price on something like gasoline, for example. And most Americans at that time were not able to adjust their their ability. They have to get to work. They have to go places. They have to do things. Um, you increase the uh, price on a staple item that people have, buy every week. That little increase, people are going to pay it because they're, it's it's a necessity, it's something that they're going to buy regularly, so it's not something that they're willing to give up unless the price gets really out of hand and then they'll have to adjust. So that's going to lead to an increase in the company's total revenue and that indicates that, that it's an inelastic, in other words it doesn't fluctuate as, as much inelastic commodity. In a free enterprise system, the key factor affecting the quantity supplied is price. Uh, let's see here. The relationship between a product's price and the quantity supplied is inverse. So it's the flipped over. The relationship between a product's price and the quantity supplies is inverse. So you increase supply, the price goes down. Decrease supply, the price goes up. Remember we talked about scarcity. So if something is scarce, if something is rare, people are willing to pay more for it. If something is, if you have too much of something, uh, it's too commonplace and people aren't interested in paying a lot for it because hey it's it's everywhere uh, after producers have paid all of their costs the amount of money remaining is called profit so you have your overhead you pay all your costs of running your business what you have left after you've, you take what you've brought in you have your profit the business makes a profit when its revenues are greater than its cost of production if producing a good takes a great deal of time, money, and resources that are not readily available, the good has an inelastic, uh, inelastic supply. I'm going to pause here, make this a nine minute presentation, and come back to you for about another nine minutes. We'll make this finish this up within under 20 minutes. Uh, so I'll be right back to you with more on economics, the unit two quiz.